Hi, my name is Don Patterson, and in this lecture, I would like to provide a short introduction to GitHub and Heroku. This is in preparation for students who are taking a class with me on developing a very simple web application that uses these two, these two cloud-based tools. Some key points. GitHub is a source code management service on the cloud, and Heroku is a web application platform also on the cloud. They work together to deploy web applications conveniently and efficiently. We're going to make a web application that uses these two complicated and powerful services, both GitHub and Heroku. But even though they're both complicated and powerful services, you can use them in very simple ways in order to get a web application up and running. Another nice feature about them is at least at intro and development levels, both of these services are free. You can use them at low level, at you know, sort of a low level of usage for development purposes um, without having to pay any money. And that's really great for being able to get a project up and running before you start um, trying to monetize it. So let's start with source code management. Source code management means trying to keep track of all of the files of source code that you are working on. And in particular, one of the challenges of working with source code management, working with source code files is one, that there are a lot of them. They exist typically in a hierarchy of folders and they're with their files within those folders. So the first challenge to working with source code and the reason why we need management systems is because there are a lot of files. The second reason is because when we develop software, we're almost always doing it in groups and trying to have multiple people editing the same software collaboratively is very challenging because source code has to all be in sync. All the different files have to be correctly architected and working together in order for the application to work. And as individuals are editing different files, that synchronization can break down. So source code management is a way of trying to um, keep all your files working well in the, in, in the collaborative environment. So there's a history of source code management. There have been many command line tools that work primarily in a Linux or Unix environment to help manage source code. The earliest one was called, the earliest one that I know of was called CI, it just stands for check in, and there was a corresponding one called checkout. Very simple um, and uh, was one of the first tools that was made um, to help manage this problem. Following that was a tool called CVS, stands for Code Versioning System. That was followed by an improvement called SVN, which was short for subversion. And that was followed by two tools that, were, that, are, that are kind of similar, um, are comparable. One is, has the command line of HG, but it's called Mercurial. And the other one is called Git. And it's just the command line's Git, and it's called Git. And today we're going to be talking specifically about Git. Git is a modern, powerful, professional, widely used tool for doing source code management. In addition to command line tools, tools that run on your local computer from a terminal, there are also a handful of web services that help manage uh, the files as well. Um, two well-known ones are GitHub and Bitbucket. Um, I think both of these services work with Git and Mercurial now, although GitHub initially worked just with Git and Bitbucket initially worked uh, with Mercurial. Again, these are cloud-based services they interact with the command line, um, the, com the command line source code management tools, um, and they're both great. Um, we're going to talk about GitHub, and we're going to work with GitHub um, in this project. In many ways, you can think about source code management just like Dropbox or Google Drive. It's a place on the cloud that stores files, and at some level, that's all it is. But because we know these are source code files, because we know they're describing computer programs, both of um, GitHub offers services that Dropbox and Google Drive doesn't offer because Google Drive doesn't know what kind of document you're storing, or at least doesn't, doesn't provide very deep services for code that you might be storing. So what are some ways in which um, source, code management's, source code management systems differentiate themselves from just file storage solutions like Dropbox or Google Drive? Well, one way in which it differentiates itself is it considers groups of files together. Most, like Dropbox and Google Drive, just think of individual files by themselves. Another way in which it's different 
is that source code management systems keeps tracks of versions of groups of files together. So it'll say, it'll um, reason about files um, as if, you, let's say for example, you have a group of 80 files and you say that's version one and you change two of those, two of those files and you wanna call that version two. And maybe you change two other files and you wanna call that version three. So source code management systems keep track of changes in files and versions of the collections of files together. They also, and this is where it starts to get complicated, allow for different timelines of files to coexist. And by, I mean timelines in the way that like a Marvel movie has different timelines when there's time travel. Like if um, you've got a group of files and they start getting changed in one direction and they go this way, but the same group of files gets changed by another person and goes this way. That's what I'm calling two different timelines. Um, more formally, they're called branches when we talk about source code management. And that's important that source code management systems handle this because one developer will create a branch to add a feature to some software, and another developer will create a different branch to add a different feature to the software. And some point in the future, they'll bring them back together so that both of those features are included in the software. It's called branching and merging. Finally, the last thing that source code management systems are very good at is acknowledging and providing tools and resources for managing the collaborators who are all working together on these documents, these groups of documents. Now that's GitHub. On the other side, we have web application deployment. Heroku is an example of such a system, web-based system. Its job is to run web applications. And what the way it does that well is by connecting to GitHub and connecting to a source code management pro, um, system like GitHub. Heroku waits and watches to see if there are any changes to the source code that's being managed by GitHub. And if there are changes, it will transfer the files to its system and launch a new web application based on those files in GitHub. And so in that way, it kind of automatically is updating the new changes to your software regularly kind of automates the practice of deploying new software. These are two really good team management and project management tools for web applications. Here's what my um, GitHub landing page looks like. Um, I actually have uh, several different repositories. A repository is like one particular project. Um, and you can have uh, many different, you know, there are different kinds of uh, pricing models and subscriptions, but generally, if your software is available for anyone to use and is open source, you can keep those for free on GitHub. Here's what Heroku looks like, a little bit more complicated. These are not like user-facing software. These are developer software tools, so they're pretty complicated and they have a lot of features. But when you learn the basics of them, you can get a simple website up and running without too much trouble. Forming an account on both of these, it's possible to have them work together. There's a collection of files in a repository on GitHub. You change some of them and Heroku brings them over and launches a new web server that's running the code that's present inside those files. Those files might consist of HTML and CSS. They might have JavaScript. They might have images and other assets all working together to create a web application experience that's changing periodically as you're developing them. GitHub and Heroku work great in this way. It launches a program, and here's an example of maybe what those files generate, a demo for my HCI class from a URL that's served from Heroku. So the key points are, GitHub is a source code management program, and Heroku is a web application platform. And they work together to create a very nice pipeline for web application development. I hope that this has given you a little bit of background for the exercise that I'm going to ask my students to do next, which is to create a very simple website like I just showed you that connects GitHub and Heroku together. I definitely recommend checking out these services. They're widely used in the professional community and a great way to get simple projects up and running, whether it's a startup, an educational project, or just something you're, you're fiddling around with. Um, thank you for your attention.